All right, so no smolder, thank Jesus. You know, r shout out to Riot who did us all a solid by banning his ear, so Saken couldn't. I wouldn't have to watch Saken play it anymore, where he just doesn't understand how to play Sand Soldiers and choke points. All right, Senna up. Ari Senna, very powerful early game or early draft here. Okay, Nico and Rel, uh, flex potential, obviously for both of these champions. Either of these could be support. Rel could be jungle. So I like this so far. Makes it difficult to get your next round of bans because you don't know where things are going. Even though Saken is probably the Nico. I don't know if I want to see Targamas as Nico, frankly. They're going to ban support and jungle here, and we are going to play Viego. So Marcoon is going to have a chance to absolutely pop off. Viego has been historically one of his better picks. Oh, on Jin Zhao. Wait, what? We're just going to blind Urgot? What? Guys, this isn't real, right? No. Okay, so that's pretty good build in, into the Urgot. If you just go at early Wardens now, it really negates much of what he can do. <laughs> Rogue, so, uh, wow, I didn't realize you hated Urgot that much. <laughs> I'm, ju I'm, like, I'm just saying, the item kind of counts. <laughs> Medic, my reaction exactly. We just, we just blind Urgot now? Like, I get if this is Heretics last year and this is Evie playing, that you would blind the Urgot, but then you just get malfighted. What is the Urgot supposed to do? Like, I just don't understand what the win condition with Urgot is. Are we actually thinking we're going to split push here? But why would we be splitting when we have kind of this like massive AoE CC combo of like Callista Ult, Rel, and Nico? How's this motherfucker going to team fight? By the way, Steak is on stage being like, I approve of this draft. This guy is a fucking legend. Why Why is Steak cool with Blind Urgot? Steak, come on, you're better than this. Good night, Naja fan. What a whack ass what a whack ass decision. I <laughs> got a leak from voice comp. Steak said, let's pick him whatever and lose in peace. <laughs> He's actually just Dardock raging now. Steak. Do we go over T1 already? Yes. Uh, but it, you can head over to my YouTube channel, and it will be there if you want to watch the T1 matchup. All you, it's the live stream that's going on on my main YouTube channel right now. All you have to do is rewind because they have that feature. Look it up. 
Look it up, Gen Z. They don't Loomis. know. They don't know that Urgot used to swap you. <laughs> they're <laughs> they're going to be like, <laughs> what? It was and so like, good. It's true. He used to fire cla crab claws from his little turret thing, yep. and he used Just to swap you. With you yeah, yep. he would swap places with you. In the whole I played support Urgot for a while, and my whole goal was flash. Ult the enemy AD carry, <laughs> flip him into my team. I'd die immediately after. He was like a was terrible a singe. Yeah. That's the way to think about it. Anyway, early jungle pathing. Let's have a look. We can see that Markun starting on the bot side, pathing up towards top. Ooh, flash in from Targo as he hits six. Comp has to cleanse flash away. Both summon. Think about it. Anyway, early jungle pathing. Let's have a look. We can see that Markun starting on the bot side, pathing up towards top. Ooh, Ooh flash in from Targo as he hits six. Comp has to cleanse flash away. Both summoners burnt. On that's the rogue a, bot That's lane. a good trade. Yeah, especially with Bo coming exactly in. Exactly that. We know that Bo is a high progressive jungler. I think he's been a core part of their success so far this split. Uh, rogue playing really far up for a bot lane that was about to hit two right there. This is kind of trolling by... They know Bo is here because they catch him on the ward. So Viego basically instantly starts to try and three quadrant jungle him. After taking Raptors, they do have the Faker ward in. So there is a Faker ward right here, so they actually see him. But it expires, so they actually... That's really bad timing, guys. This ward here expires right before he moves down here, so they know he's at Raptors, but they don't necessarily know that he is trying to move into Blue Quadrant, Bo's Blue Quadrant. You can probably intuit it, especially now that you see the dive coming in. Remember that the Nautilus is the one who wants to farm here, so killing him does actually have a big effect, but it is very difficult to dive a level 2 Nautilus, and now we just use flash two flashes to do that. Uh-huh. Okay. Interesting. This is a third wave crash, guys. Flashes out of the W. Gets the hook onto upset, and so we used two flashes to accomplish nothing, and we lost our entire jungle. I mean, credit to them because I think that's about as well as Rogue could have played it. Casey really wanted to force that dive, so at least with a really good flash to create space between him and Bo. Targamus was in an awkward position as well in terms of when he was stuck underneath the tower. No kills end up going down. Summoners used on Bo, Targamus, Zoelis as well. I think Marku also went. All right, so now we just have a. They saw Bo on the ward in Tribush, so Bo's going to walk back into his jungle and be down a blue bar. And they accomplished nothing because Nautilus got to farm under the turret, and so they didn't even lose any CS. Make me so angry <laughs> and actually, Rogue is higher level now because it required Carmine Corp to recall, so what a fucking terrible play. It's like they're intentionally losing. towards the drake from both teams might just be they want to set up vision around it could also be i believe it's got a we also have call ergot so he's just he he literally recalls and buys call so he's stacking boys he's stacking I mean, I don't mind Urgot in certain games, but I just don't understand what his purpose here is. Like, the, they, like, what? What is he supposed to do? Especially when you're blind to go. I already watched T1 versus HLE, yeah. You can check out the VOD. You, 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 you didn't miss it, guys. It's literally on the YouTube channel that I'm still currently streaming on, all you have to do is go to the live stream and just rewind it. It's not hard. It's not gone forever. It's there for you to watch right now. And yet they somehow get first blood. Yeah, 
tries to get away from this. Targum's going for the engage, though. At least doesn't have a flash either in Vitality. Alright, well, they do get the farming Nautilus. They do get a, a CS lead eventually here. Alright, now they can take Drake. Alright, things are a lot better now. What's up, banger as fuck Milky Way series? Uh, the series versus JDG and Weibo are pretty entertaining. Is Cast talking about Vitality? What, what are you talking about? I wasn't listening. No. Casey Vitelli. Ah, well, it happens. It happens. He should feel safe enough to secure all three grubs as well, which will tick him over to level six. The problem is, though, for the rogue bot lane, like, Markun's on the other side of the map. All right, we're back for Zoe Lee's dive round one million. Nico is making his way over as well. Saken leveraging some of the push that he has to offer threat. And now the Urgot is saying, you want to dive me? Thoughts? Nice, because that would be the traditional cross map, but the wave's not in a good enough position to really threaten that dive. Cabo should feel very safe here. Still has the flash up. Fleet footwork going to keep him nice and healthy. And uh, overall, Casey's sitting in a pretty comfortable spot right now. Even with the lead that Markun does have, and it's pretty sizable one in the jungle, you can see a huge camp advantage, 400 gold lead. That Callista is getting very strong, very fast. First base, boots, Berserker's Greaves into the recurve bow. That's just a... That's a great back. <laughs> that's uh, uh, obviously really wanting that upgraded boots early. Increases your martial poise. Ability just to dash around the fights as much as possible. Sometimes we do see priority on the serrated dirt. Mm -hmm. um, when we had treats on the broadcast last play, he was talking a lot to us about how it can just be really powerful. All right, this is super boring. Your Q, get some value out of it, um, but upset instead. Positioning towards this mid lane. Too high for micro. Thank you for your subscription. There's a JDG versus Milky Way bangers only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did all those series. I've done a lot of the the most, almost all of the recent Milky Way games are I've done bad reviews of. We're gonna have Milky Way Day get uh, probably sometime, probably Wednesday or Thursday of this next week. Thank you, medic. That's very kind of you to subscribe to me. I appreciate your casting. You're a very good caster. Um, yeah, I, I think we're going to do Milky Way Day later this next week, guys, where I, uh, I review, I, I probably, I mean, I've seen all those games, but I'm going to take a look at them again and try and, uh, create a more edited video about why Milky Way is so good right now. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that research on stream and we'll, we'll pull a bunch of highlights together and then I'll just, at the very end of the stream, I will make the video basically on stream and then I'll have an editor fuck with it. But you, you guys will see how the, the video sausage is made, as it were. But I think it's it'll be a good exercise to... Because nobody's actually made any kind of um, deep an analysis content on Milky Way yet. Not in English, at least. Which is kind of a shame, because I think people are wondering, like... You know, seeing a bunch of different examples lined up about ways in which Milky Way is good. So I think that could be fun content. So I'll do that on stream. Meanwhile, we're just going to watch this Nautilus get dove a million times. Not bad. I mean, the first dive was kind of bad, but the rest of the dive's been pretty good. Larson hits the charm onto Targamas, who has Callista ult on him, so no big deal. Life on Rumble goes crazy. Yeah, that, that series was definitely a life MVP series. The one versus JDG, life plays super well. <laughs> Your most mornings. <laughs> no, it's it's nice of you. I hope you enjoy my reviews of some of these games, medic. It's fun to go back and watch them. The more analytical bent, where you can get a lot of 
replaying in. Slow it down and do some analysis. It's less about that and more about the fact that this Callista is accelerating. She is already in a very powerful spot. Wouldn't be surprised if they even consider swapping her up towards the top side. Maybe they want to try and unlock those grubs or towers. Maybe they just want to keep this 2v2 going for as long as possible. So Elix has been left isolated on the bot side of the map. Here comes Finn with the ult. Cabochon has the flash. Uses the same to flip over Finn, but Comp takes the kill. No flash burnt there by Cabochard, holding on to it, knowing that he was pretty much doomed. So at least clears out the wave with the Riptide hook. Up there, just dodged to the side of it. Grubs up though, and it's always the easiest thing to do when you are behind in that AD carry roll. Here's what I will say, even with the early game going like this for KC, I think Malphite might just make Callista irrelevant. Yeah. Now, not the player, yeah. as in like the actual function in this game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Malphite is just such a good pick into Callista. <laughs> like, his E just makes Callista players really sad. <laughs> uh, yeah, Callista's like, also, also very yeah, low range, so it's not that hard for Malphite to get on top of Callista either. They're doing a good, really good job of keeping this Nautilus from getting super tanky, though. And controlling Drake on the side of the map. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right as I, I cast, I went back in time and caster cursed them, guys. I caster cursed them from the future. Larson already on the roam. Warden's Mail is done for Zoelise now. So he actually does get the Senna ult from across the map, which is a really big part of this. So Targamas takes aggro. Takes aggro with Q on the stun, so then he gets rooted in turn, hit by Senna ult. Has to jump out, but Larson blast cones over, so he's already there. Upset, then takes turret aggro, guys. So, right there. That's the Nautilus ult. Upset flashes out, so he's not in range to trigger rend anymore, so those spears are useless. He comes back in, does get the rend eventually, but Larson's already there. Oh my god, it's a train wreck. Zoli saving ult for second target. Yeah, he didn't. He really held it a long time, and he got the double value by the knock up on bow as well. He's very patient. He knew Larson was coming, so that's why he saved his ult, I bet. Was he, was, he knew he was dead, but he thought if he could stall long enough, it was really just about stalling as long as possible to get Larson there, and it worked out because he gets a triple. Meanwhile, they were slow building this wave in the top side, and they, they had sent the Senna up, but Senna is broken, and so has cross-map ability to participate in fights. And so Comp just gets... A million assists for the, that entire sequence. Really great play here from Larson. Keep your eyes on the minimap because the dive doesn't really matter. Zolis plays this about as well as he can. Blast Cone MVP, by the way. Also offering a lot of time. Saving the depth charge as well. Really good there from Zolis. Really good stuff. And then it's just the arrival of Larson. He gets the reset on his ultimates. Has enough to secure a triple kill. And while all this is happening, there's a top dive. Freddy, so much enthusiasm on his face. Incredibly proud of his team there. But very well played. Now, uh, look at Rogue. 3k gold lead. And it comes back to the fact that Marcoon is now a full level above his jungle counterpart. He's just been perma-farming. This Diego is incredibly strong. Now, when we get back into the game, we'll highlight just how strong he is. Look at those itemizations. The, the Kraken Slayer already completed. A thousand gold lead in the mid lane as well. Malignant's finished for Larson. 12 minutes in. That's a pretty good timing to have that done. And the game just gets harder for Carmichael. You had this lead in the AD carry roll, and you, you still have it. You know, you have 800 gold advantage there, but so at least is ahead as expected with him having farmed. Mid lane is now almost a thousand gold ahead for Rogue. My so, what is this Urgot gonna do, guys? The O2 Urgot. I'm very curious. Next item, Frozen Heart. You know who dislikes Frozen Heart? Urgot and Callista. <laughs> they do not have a fun time. 
into this mouth part, and I feel the uh, the surprise factor of this ergot is uh, more of a shock, perhaps, for Carmine Core fans because it hasn't been as effective as well, KT would have wanted. I still have a bit of a shock around the ergot blind. Yeah, uh, that is something that I, I still don't really fully understand. Uh, I don't get it. Get some insight from KC afterwards because, like, the Malphite, this Malphite. Yep. You know, if you pick Ragan, uh, in any case, this is the situation that KC now find themselves in. The good news is that Callisto is still in a pretty powerful position. The bad news is that Larson's Ari is in an even stronger position, and uh, I think Rogue are going to be happy to fight Ooh, whenever so they want. Tucks in. Out here yeah, but he's a farming not, so he's super strong. All right. Okay. So they actually get onto Larson. Larson has to flash and then use one of his charges to get out. They execute him. Okay, Finn's still here. Finn has ult. They really want to go after this? No. Get out. Please leave. Push mid. I can't believe Yamato would blind Urgot like this. Fuck Yamato, dude. I can't believe he mind-controlled them into playing this badly and going 1-3 in, in LEC. Oh, I wonder if he tried to flash over it. But, uh, yeah, so... Part of the reason why Rogue is 0-3 is because it played... Oh. <laughs> they split around the hook. That was such a surprise. He hooks into the brush, doesn't actually hit somebody, and he's like, oh shit, there's a lot of people in that brush. That was pretty sloppy. That was pretty sloppy, just like blind hooking into the brush when your top laner isn't there and Urgot is literally right here. Like, the setup on this for Rogue is fucking terrible. Silly. Guys, please don't tell me this game is like, oh my god, this game is so long. You guys, why do you do this to me? Is this game like 50 minutes long? Why is why is this VOD an hour and 11 minutes long, guys? Okay, it has PGL on the back. I got really nervous. I got really nervous, guys. I, you made me really nervous that this game was like 50 minutes long and I was going to have to sit through another 35 minutes of this shit. But it's not. There actually is just PGL at the back of this. Okay, it's not, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. It's like a 34-minute game or something like that. Why would you do this to me? I mean, to be fair, all I hear most play-by-play -play say is the meat grinder. <laughs> yeah, but that, that applies to everything. Okay? Don't call us out like that. Dracos is in the back room crying right now because of you. I hear flowers. It's everything he ever needed. Man. Every play-by-play. -play. It's like when they see an Urgot, I remember 2020, every single one of you. It's just a meat grinder. Mid-tower uh, mid going to fall in favor of Rogue. Dude, I'm not watching those LCS playoff games on stream. Those are so bad. I already watched a bunch of those games live. Because they're on in the morning for me. Saken has to be careful. He's looking for an opportunity to flank. Doesn't quite have his flash up. Larson's trying to mark him. Smart move by I guess it's just another easy playoff win for Cloud9, guys. Frozen heart finished on Zoe Elise. Will help without attack speed slow. Dragon down to 7,000. Targamus stepping forward. Finn doing the same. The hook onto Targamus. The charm to follow. Face call pulls him out. Zoe Elise falls low. Fear beyond death. The meat grinder cometh. As Finn is going to get locked up as well into the pop. He tries to dive back in. Targmus tries to dive onto the back line. Finn goes down, but now it's on Larson and Cobb to really open up Bone. Mark Rune's just going to kill everybody, though. Here we go. Nice charm. Goodbye. 
All right, so I guess the point of the Urgot is just to assassinate the frontline farming Nautilus, because that's the only thing that he's done so far. He gets a fear, at least, onto Finn. Right? But Finn, they're all clustered up, and Finn still has ult. Where's his ult? All right, he gets his ult off right before he dies. But you only need that one kill to start the Viego snowballing. And there's no real backline threat here on the Senna or the Ari. They do a good job of trying to burst down the Malphite in as much as that is possible. Senna ult gets pretty good value. Bo's ult goes down. So now there's really nothing preventing Marcoon from just running down everybody else because they're such low range. Uh, you need to kill Marcoon really fast in these fights. If they can kill Marcoon, they probably win. What happened to Saken's ult? It's right here. They they use they only use it on Finn, so there's no real threat. Honestly, Marcoon keeps himself alive through a lot of this just by playing the flank. And therefore, he's full HP when it actually comes to the first kill that goes through and he can start the resets. Yeah, he didn't have flash up. Yeah, Sagan just barely didn't have flash up yet. Six grubs now for Rogue. They were able to find a lot of great dives. Look at the animation. The other one will hide in fog of war. Top lane wave. Larson will catch the bot side. Scout Rogue will look for an early Baron Betty. It's always a possibility. They don't have the fastest Baron, that's yeah. for sure. Uh, I will continue to point out for our viewers, if you want to keep track of the stacks, you just have to look at this little icon here. Not that many. Uh, I have seen not that right now. quite a few stacks on the ground, which always makes me sad. But yeah, uh, um, next to the icons, you can see the stacks. You can see the experience bar as well. And this <coughs> most yeah. of our stacking champions. I, I don't I'm pretty sure it's all our stacking champions. Yeah. Do you know there were 15 infinite stacking champions in League of Legends? I did not know that many. It's a fun fact. List them for us, Betty. I just said I don't know. I mean, 85 is not bad. 90 at 21 minutes is not bad. Like, f you know, four souls per minute is pretty good so for Senna. So it's definitely like average or slightly above average, I think. Like 80 souls at 20 minutes is pretty good. Pretty good. So 90 souls at 21 minutes is slightly better than pretty good.
so you can just look up infinite. Is they controlling? That's another good one. Yeah. Wow, that was that was a fun fact. I yeah. enjoyed all of that, medic. Thank you. For he's that. so he's the first. Them, he's the first melee minion, and then as soon as he comes into vision, he just moves. So they know it's him, instantly. They just know it's him. You can just look up infinite stacking champions, or look up Shivano, and it's somewhere down the list. Um, I'm not going to list them all here. What? Because well, firstly, because I can't remember them all. <laughs> Secondly, because there's a game of League of Legends happening in front of us. I'm also hoping that a fight's about to break out. It's but why? Primary control of the objective. But look at the top lane. <laughs> there goes my hero. Down for Larson. Do you care about this Drake? I mean, I don't think it's enough. I mean, if you're rogue, not really. Yeah, just, just let him, let him take it. You just know? keep you him here. Let Larson do work in a look side lane. Menacing. Send them a threat. I mean, he also has the TP anyway. Does he have a good ward to TP to? Not really. To whom it may concern. Alright, so they did realize that they Markoon is the most important person to kill. They did realize that. This is true. This the truth is is that they should be killing Markoon first if possible. Markoon is trying to go in by himself. I do not know why he's going in by himself. So he can get Giga CC'd with no backup from his team and then killed by Urgot. What the fuck? Secured by Carmine Core. They get a kill, but they lose an inhibitor for it. So I Marco didn't need to do that. Uh he just walked into a brush that he did to not really So right now they're split pushing with the Ari, right? Ari doesn't even have Lich Bane. Okay, well, it would be easier some might say with the Lich Bane second. Anyway, uh we have them threatening against the Drake right here. Remember, this is Soul Point. I mean, I don't think it's enough. They're split pushing, and Mark Kuhn, his one job is to not walk into the bush with Saken in it. Ping's coming down for Larson. Do you care about primary control of the objective? But look at the top lane. Ping's coming down for Larson. Do you care about this Drake? I mean, I don't think it's enough. You don't care about the Drake if you're rogue. You're getting in Hib for it. Just keep him here. Let Larson do work in a side lane. Uh huh. So they see Saken's clone come out of that brush. Ergo, they know Saken is in that brush. And then he decides to just 1v1 Saken. Alright. Alright, what is that shot calling from a macro's perspective? Like, why does Marku need to face check that brush? I think you could have put, you they put already got the inhib. The, the call was to give up the Drake. Like, you're just trying to delay long enough for Larson to pick up inhib. You committed to the trade. Both of these teams are very bad. You did use two ultimates, so I understand their hesitancy. At the end of the day, as you rightly said, top inhibitor secured for Rogue. Now sole point for KC, and that's probably what they think is probably worth it. Bot side, maybe they go for that bot tier two. Maybe they want to use the Baron as an objective to force something. They need to leverage the fact that they have constant pressure in top lane. Because if you don't, you are just going to funnel all that farm. Like they had the right idea and they executed 99% of it and then they decided to run their most important player into the enemy so he could be killed first for free. Oh, he's hit that power spike. Finished pushing in the bot wave. That's matched by Saken. He went Jack Show second for this exact eventuality. Getting himself a little bit of magic. This could have gone towards the frozen heart, but with Zoelise already having completed that, it was the first target. TP behind by Carmine Core here. There's the Nico Pop Blossom onto Larson. Zoelise as well. Last oh my god, the fucking Malfold. Oh lord. Here we go. Do you guys like resets? I love resets. Carmine Core are knocked off the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a big fall, it seems, as they are locked out of the fight. Two kills. Over to Rogue in exchange for just Zoelise. Larson going in once again. Charm buffered away by Cabo. Medic, in this analogy, Humpty Dumpty is Kometo, right? He's Humpty Dumpty? I assume what that means. That's what that means. He has a very uh, Humpty Dumpty physique. <laughs> forgiven? <laughs> Thank you, Forgiven. How you doing, man? And the wall, yes, and the wall is a blue one. <laughs> They're secure the Baron. Thanks for giving. Hope you're doing well, man. So look at the last embrace from comp here, because I think 
Uh, we're, we're wrapping up here, but I, I'll pass the love on to somebody else. How about you? Everything well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chilling in Korea, man. I'll have to catch up with your stream sometime. I'll return the favor if you're streaming. But thanks. Nice of you to give the raid. Well played by Rogue, but in so that he can have that extra bit of durability. Gives you armor. Just on death. Yeah, dude. Kills over to Rogue in exchange for just Zoe Elise Larson going in. TP behind by Carmine Core here. There's the Nico Pop Blossom onto Larson. Zoe Elise. I mean, it looks nice until you realize that Finn has such a great angle. <laughs> Petition just to change Kometo's name to Humpty Dumpty. It's more appropriate. I bet Greek people for sure would love to see you review a game. What what Greek game? <laughs> Com comps game? <laughs> I need to get to Greece at some point, man. I've always wanted to go. Haven't been yet. I know so much about ancient Greece, and I've never been. Need to see that shit in person. Get out into the islands, too. So many places I want to go in Greece. An eyebrow raise, as there's not much you could have done about that. The arm guard cosplaying the jungle. Gonna come across, has that unstoppable force. Cabochard spotted by that super minion. Rogue can just step forward. You've got comp, you've got the range. There's the TP behind. All right, here he, here he comes. Here comes. Kometo, I mean, Urgot, sorry. My bad. Easy mistake to make, you know. Oh. Well, it was a nice flank attempt. It was the desperation flank. He got one kill. He got the shutdown, guys. I love how Finn has arm guard. Preventing, all right. How many, how many more barons it's gonna take, guys? Surely the game ends here, right? He said, hopefully. <laughs> the flank would have been good if it wasn't Urgot. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of things. This fed Urgot really is just showing how useful he is. He got the arm guard out of Finn. That was really the value. <laughs> that minion hard right Nico mimic play of the game for sure. I have no idea what was going on there. That was one of the weirder like attempts at a Nico bait bait I've seen. Uh, as a former actor, have you done any Greek plays? I sure have. Uh, I was in The Birds. Quality Aristophanes. Alright, we, we gotta wait for the next Baron. Okay, 30 seconds to my experiment. We're doing the, the slow, methodical close here from Rogue. This is the right call to make. How is it both Ultra Fan Orgs and Carmine Corp and Mad Koi have Humpty Dumpty influencer leaders and everybody blindly follows them? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's not, it's not a good look. 
It's not a good look. I don't think Upset is ever killing Finn unless he's... To be fair, Ibai kind of looks like Orson Welles. Uh, like, late stage career Orson Welles when he was, like, drunk doing uh, wine commercials. If you know what I mean. Alright, Bo goes in. Bo pops ult. Saken comes in. Saken gets a two man ult, but it's onto the tanks. Saken pops arm guard, so he's not charmed. Nice root onto Larson, actually. However, uh, Finn still. Wait, where was Finn? Did Finn just ult in place? Sorry, I didn't see that. Okay, yeah, he did. Basically, just ult in place there to provide some peeling, but Mark Rin's going from the side. Now he's just going to start picking up a million resets, and the game is over. And it's over. And it's over. Don't even need to get Baron. Okay. Well, that was less bad than I thought it would be, guys, but it was still pretty bad.